E Homai, E Homai, E Homai, E Kaiki, my Luna, my E. On a mea huna no, awe me le E Homai, E Homai, E Homai, E Homai, E Kaiki, my Luna, my E. On a mea huna no, awe me le E Homai. E ho mai, e ho mai, e ho mai ka iki mai luna mai, on a mea huna no, au e mele e. Hele hoi a kala o moka, o kona, hele hoi o makai, oh, wherever you come from, mainland, uh, all over the world, welcome Unity Church of Kona as this offering to the prayer chant of Hawaii is an offering for the Great Spirit to grant us the wisdom. And it's a beseeching of Aomai, Aomai, beseeching the Great Spirit for the wisdom of the stories, the underlying meaning of the story. Why would we tell these stories to our children? And then the highest octave, why would we be uh, having these experiences in life that become our stories? Grant us the wisdom of the experiences of life so that we can move forward smarter and wiser in that knowledge. And so it is. Thank you. Well, good morning and welcome to Unity of Kona. My name is Sasha and I'm so happy to be here today with you. And for those of you joining in on tuning in online with us, we're so happy you're here. We'd like to start today off with doing a prayer. So we're gonna begin by saying, Heavenly Father, we believe that you have called us to journey together through life and that you are here with us on this adventure. As we journey with each other and with you, change our vision so we see the world as you see it and love it as you do. Help us to become more like you and together growing your kingdom as we live out our values. We, we believe that love is the priority and the core of your kingdom. Open your eyes and hearts to your love for us Help us to see and love as you do, to love each other and your world unconditionally. Help us to practice love by listening, encouraging, and helping. We want to welcome others as you welcome us with arms wide, running to meet us and embrace us. Help us to put welcome into practice, encouraging others to join the journey, acknowledging that we are all family. We are all connected and one. We believe you call us your children and to be childlike, full of wonder and adventure. Help us to make space for fun, for meeting together, sharing food and drink, enjoying each other's company, guide us to encouraging and each other along the way. We believe you are with us each step of this journey of life. We believe that you will empower and transform us as individuals and as a community, helping us to learn a way of love, of peace, of service, of wisdom, and of family. And so it is. Amen. And now, if you will please stand with me, we're going to say our vision and mission and affirmation of the day. So together, can we say our vision statement? A world family of oneness, peace, and love. And our mission statement, together, to inspire spiritual growth and service through the active practice of love, prayer, faith, joy, and honoring everyone as a child of God. And now our affirmation of the month is, together let's say this also is wisdom. Every day in every way, the light of wisdom illumines my path. And so it is. And now I'm gonna invite our singers up to the stage and we're gonna sing our opening song together. We come together. Hi. Take a look at the person next to, to you. you. Mm -hmm. Say, Say God, God loves you and I love you, you too. Feel the love in sanctuary and lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together. 
We come together in the name of love. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together in the name of love. Now look at the person next to you. Say, I recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Now lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together in the name of love. From every walk of life, every creed and color, every creed and color, and if you feel nice, ooh, 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 ooh. in honor of the God, God in each other, mm -hmm. look at the Luke person Ryan. next to you, say, say, say namaste, I bow to you, feel the love in the sanctuary, your voice and repeat after me. Ooh. We come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. We come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. We come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. Aloha. Well, we come together, and with this time, we'd like to greet each other with a handshake or a hug. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I need online. Make sure if you're joining us, tuning in, write in the comments so we can properly greet you too. So I think that was the first time in a couple of years that we have done that welcoming and greeting and it's just so nice to have everyone here and happy to see each other. <laughs> okay. Now can you hear me a little better? All right. <laughs> well, we're going to go on and, and go with our announcements for the morning. Unity of Kona is first and foremost a prayer ministry. Um, if you haven't, I'd invite you to download our YouPray app. This is something that I use all the time. Whether I'm even in like a line, grocery store line, and I'm feeling a little anxious, I'll, I'll open that app and then I will look at even the affirmations and I just start saying those. Or you can, of course, send off your prayer request and you can ask for them to email you back. And you get a, a personalized prayer just for you. And, and Silent Unity will then pray for it for 30 days. You can also send us your prayer here. You could call or email. We'll pray over it here, and then we will then forward it on to Silent Unity for you. So, I mean, unity is power of prayer here. 
<laughs> and we have our online services, so please join us if you can't make it in person, which it's so nice to see a full crowd in here today. Um, if you can't, you can always tune in online. You can see us on Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. You can't miss us there. Yeah. And now we have the daily, oh, actually, I do have a few more announcements, I believe. Today, you can't miss it. You got to come today to our, our vision boarding workshop by Kayla. We haven't been able to have that for a couple of years. So she has a bunch, I mean, a ton of our cutouts, and it's just a wonderful experience, transformative. So you can really vision what you'd like the rest of 2022 to look like. So I invite you, and we're doing it virtually as well. So if you can't, if you're not here in person, you can tune in and do it online with us. So we're really cool to bring that hybrid today. Um, hey, I can't forget our team member of the month is Dondi. Woo! Mahalo, well, Dondi for your loving service. You know, he served as board president for four years. And you know, Don, you could call on him any time to do something and he would be there. So we just want to just gratefully thank you for your service to Unity. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And next Sunday, following the service, is our healing Sunday. So you can, we'll have our, our healing bowls, and there will be individual Reiki that will be given as well. So that you can, and it's right following the service, right outside. Oh, right inside now. Okay. And we'll be broadcasting too. How cool is this? Amazing. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. That's so great. We're just moving in a groove in here. I just love it. And now we have asked Jeannie, Jim's sister, is going to read the Daily Word. Isn't this just so cool? She's South Carolina, right? So she's going to tune in and read the Daily Word for us today. And Jeannie, we just need you to unmute yourself. Just that button in the bottom. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Aloha. Today's Sunday, April 24, 2022. The word today is gather. We gather and magnify the presence of God. As I gather with others in the spirit of love and peace, my awareness of God's presence becomes more powerful, even palatable. Together we created energy, a vibration greater than any of us has alone. I am comfortable and at ease when I notice our differing appearances, preferences, backgrounds, and opinions, because I am reminded of the limitless diversity of divine expression and my place in it. When I join the fellowship with my family, friends, and all others who are dear to me, each of us becomes a mirror for the others. We see in one another the divine presence that lives in and expresses as every person. The unifying energy of divine love unites and binds us together in this love that we are one. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Psalm 133, 1. Today's word is gather. We gather and magnify the presence of God. Thank you. Thank that you. That is beautiful. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you, Janie, for joining us, tuning in. Well, that is just, I just, I'm still amazed at technology. I mean, how cool is that, that we can have someone tuning in from South Carolina and to be here with us today to do that part. All over. Well, yeah, anyone who is watching us online that you're tuning in, that we can actually have them part of the service. It's just uh, amazing. So at this time, I'd like you to visualize this sanctuary as a beautiful heart. We're going to move this heart in and out and through, vibrating in and out of everyone, everyone online joining in. And I ask you to put anyone inside this beautiful heart that at this time in need of prayer, anything in our world, any person, and we hold this beautiful, precious space of love for that person, the people, the world in this beautiful heart. And together, we're going to say the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The, I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. 
and all is well. And now we're going to call Dondi up. Now that we're all able to gather together, I feel the spirit of Aloha so much more now than ever before. So I thought of this song, it's called Aloha Is. It really is the essence of how we live here in the islands. With, uh, we malama the aina, we malama everyone that lives, everything that lives. Um, we take care of the land and the land will take care of us as well. So this is Aloha Is. Aloha is a promise The sun will shine again Bringing fresh hopes and dreams With each new day that begins Aloha is the sunlight Shining through the darkness Giving strength, giving strength To all we do Aloha is the sunlight Shining through the darkness Giving strength, giving strength To all we do Aloha is His grace Walking in the sunlight Feeling the beauty of life Feeling the beauty of life Aloha is his helping hand, his warm and comforting voice. It is peace be with you in love forever and always. Aloha is the mind, the heart, in perfect harmony. It's tenderness and love deep in the heart of Hawaii. Aloha is Hawaii, Hawaii is aloha, Hawaii is aloha, Yahweh, I love you, aloha is Hawaii. I love you. Thank you, you Dondi. That was just beautiful. What a, a wonderful way to keep going with our morning. And now it's time. Without further ado, we'd like to bring up Jim. <laughs> and he's going to lead us in our meditation and talk for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friends. Grab my paperwork here. 
as we gather together, get uh, comfortable in your seats now as we get ready for some meditation time. And just breathe. Breathe as you get comfortable planting your feet flat on the floor and looking around. Just take a moment and uh, eyeball something, a thing that just kind of grabs your attention. And then go from another thing to another thing and then another object for your awareness to be focused. When your awareness comes focused, then gently close your eyes and focus into your mind's eye. And meditate and rest in this moment of breath. And as we breathe together, our breath comes one, and let us inhale with the aloha, and exhale with mahalo. So as you fill your lungs with the aloha, you exhale with the gratitude, the mahalo. And again, aloha and mahalo. And as thoughts may arise, they are just thinking. For you are the thinker controlling the thoughts. And it's you that decides what to think in choosing the thoughts. And now placing your awareness on the aloha and the mahalo controls that thinking. And in between those thoughts is this place of peace. Any distractions that may arise come back to this breath of aloha and mahalo. For it is this that is the breath of life. And as we breathe fully, with every breath, we move deeper and deeper into another level of awareness and peace. And as we control our thinking, focus this light into your movie screen, your mind's eye, in the divine colors of light. So bring to your mind's eye the color red. For the red is the root chakra, your grounding. So now just think in your mind the color red. Say it in your mind, red, red, red. And as the color starts to fill your movie screen, the light of red comes into your system, your chakra system, your root. And as you feel that light, dwell in that red light. And as it starts to transform, we move up. And as the red changes to orange, feel the color orange sitting in your solar plexus, your intuitive center. Focus now into this color, orange. Say it in your mind, orange, orange, orange. Focusing on the orange, it fills your mind's eye with the brightest color of orange. And as it transcends, it moves up the system into the yellow. And the orange just develops this brightest color yellow, the color of your diaphragm, your breathing center. And as you bring now the color yellow into your mind's eye with full bright yellow, yellow, yellow. Hold this light in your mind's eye as we move forward. And as the, we move forward, we move up and to the color green and the yellow develops this most beautiful shade of green and let it unfold into your heart center. For this is the healing light. The healing color is green. And as you now hold the color green into your mind's eye, 
let it fill your movie screen with the green, green, green. Let it fill your heart with the green healing light. Feel the light energizing your being as it moves up in the colors of the blue. The blue comes into the throat chakra. And this brings the blue light into your mind's eye. When you just think blue, blue, blue. And it fills your throat chakra. You are now free to speak your own truths. And as the blue starts to transcend into the color purple, as it moves up to where your third eye, the location in the center of your forehead, feel the color purple and filling your being with the purple and right through your mind's eye you see this purple, purple. Purple. And as you hold the sacred color of awareness in the purple, it starts to transcend into the purest of all lights as it reaches to your crown chakra. The color is white. Hold the white light in your mind's eye. Let the white light fill your body with God's light. Now we're holding the white. The white. The white light to be filled with peace. And as we fill our whole body with the colors of the rainbow, we know that this peace of this place dwells within any, all of us. As we embody that Christ spirit within the light of the rainbow. And as you start to move back through the colors, visualize the colors as you move back from white purple, to blue, to green, yellow, orange, and red. You are whole, healthy, and alive. And as you come back into this time and this moment, just with the aloha of the inhale and the mahalo of the exhale, Know that this is perfect time, perfect place. You are here right now. Thank you. And so it is. The breath. The breath is the life, and the breath is known as life. And through the breath, we embody these physical beings as a breath of light. And as we come to the unity, we incorporate all beliefs. And we all know that as unity, we are truth seekers. And as seeking truth, we find truth in all religions. And so be that seeker of truth, and you'll climb the mountain. And finding one truth is, is grand, but there are many truths in life. And Hawaiian value systems come together with many truths. And so as we look into today, what the church has done is the board of directors gathered and uh, developed new values for the church. We encompass the Hawaiian values. The Hawaiian values of aloha is the number one value. But then we have the ohana and the mana, the kuleana, and the malu. These are truths spoken 
in a metaphoric language. So the first impression of aloha is hello and goodbye. But as a metaphoric language, 12 letters, they encompassed layers of kauna, meaning within the words. And within the words of, of aloha, and within all the words, are deeper meanings. And so my hope is to share some of these deeper aspects of the cultural belief system through these simple values that we take as our own. And then we become wiser. And with the wisdom of living life of value, it gives everything a purpose. And so everything is, has a meaning and a reason to be here in this moment, right now. And if you miss that moment, this is a tragedy. Because you may have been able to just inspire somebody with a simple truth, a simple value that could change a life. And so by encompassing the church, encompassing the values of the Hawaiian culture, we ask you to encompass these into your own lives. As the aloha is so much more than hello and goodbye. When I first found myself here coming from the mainland, I found a whole transition in understanding there is something different about these people. But to nail it, what is it that's so different? It's the root of the whole belief system of the Hawaiian culture, aloha. And it's evident everywhere you go, in the traffic, the grocery store. I haven't been hit in the rear end with a shopping cart since I got here. <laughs> this is just the sign of that aloha, but it goes so much deeper. I was, I'm a tour guide, and I was doing a tour. I had a rabbi on board who was fluent in Hebrew, and he told me that the word kahuna has direct connections to the Hebrew for uh, master uh, priest. And so language connections. And he said, many words directly connect Hawaiians to the Aramaic and the Hebrew. And he brought, the, I was able to bring the connection to him, and it was like an epiphany. Ha. The ha of aloha is your breath. Hawaiian culture is the ha. And so the ha was taught and to me as a child in India, belief systems. My father was a yogi, and it was the ha. We called it the silent ha. And when you exhale a silent ha, you maintain that energy, which is the mana. So kind of jumping around a little bit. I'm going to stay with the aloha, though. But Allah, Allahim is the word for God. In Hawaiian, it's akua. Aloha is that breath of God. Like in India, namaste. The light within me reflects that light within you. In this, knowing this, never uh, assume aloha as a weakness. It's a direct reflection of your energy. And so some people are accepted here with aloha, and others feel like they're not welcome. An attitude cops an attitude anywhere you go. You come to the islands and expect them to change to become what you want. It isn't going to happen. This isn't sharing your aloha. In order to share your aloha, you have to take off your mask. And so when you come here, it's like, OK, it's a whole transition from anything I've ever done. And I've always played this person over here but you have to take that off. Share your true light. Your true light will shine and be reflected, and they will reflect that back to you. And it's just an incredible thing. It's an instantaneous reflection of your energy. Aloha, the breath of God. And when you're true with this aloha, then you're accepted truly with aloha. But if you come here with the attitude, I've seen people get roundhouse just as quick as they could have been accepted. And, and some people say, oh, in a year, in a year and a half, they felt like they were racist and they didn't accept me. And it's like, I just didn't feel welcome. Well, if you can't take off the mask, you won't be welcome. You have to actually become part of this community. And so you can't go changing the way things are. You have to adapt to the way they are. You change the way you shop. You change the way you drive. You change the way you do everything in life the way you wear your clothes. I wear slippers most of the time now. <laughs> but these are the things that will help you to become part of this community. So aloha, the breath of God is a deeper meaning, a kauna. I was like, it's more than hello and goodbye, but it's an instant reflection of that light that you come here with. And so come here with an open heart and mind, and they will truly accept you. I have been embraced by the Hawaiian culture. I'm humbled by the acceptance that I've received. And it's because of an open heart and mind to do this, what I do to the best of my ability, and it's my responsibility to do so, 
Kuliana, another one of our words given to me by Kumu Peter of Lani Kai School in Oahu. I worked with his Hawaiian children four years in a row doing Hawaiian historical tours, and he challenged me in many ways to show my true light and to be who I am and to share this culture to the best of my ability in a service that when he retired, he held his hands out and I put my hands on his and he says, now you have kuleana, responsibility to be ikapono, share this culture to the best of your abilities. And I take it so seriously because sharing Hawaiian stories and legends is keeping their culture alive and with aloha, this is the, what energy needs to come to the world right now in this time of need. The aloha can be spread once you accept it and you be real. You can go anywhere in the world and carry your aloha with you and be a spreader of that joy. So the aloha is a spiritual truth. It's undeniable. And my father taught me as a, growing up in the cab of a truck that seeking truth Seek for truth. If you find anybody denying this truth, then you need to look deeper into it because then it's not a truth. It should be completely undeniable. And we are all the breath of God. Aloha. So that's the first spiritual truth that we have accepted here at the church. And then we get into Ohana. Ohana, well, you know, if you've watched Lilo and Stitch, you know Ohana means family, right? Well, family is the general surface meaning of the word ohana. Ohana is a connection, a spiritual connection that's made from you to the, every person you meet. If this connection is open, it becomes ohana. When you look someone in the eye or you touch them in the hand, your body's aura is called the aka in Hawaiian. And when you touch them, you pull off a thin filament of this aka cord. This cord connects you to everyone you've ever met, every ever touched, and, and looked at in your whole life. And when you meet somebody new, they're connected to everyone they've ever touched and looked at and met in their whole life. This becomes an energetic connection of you to them and everyone. And from everyone to everyone becomes all of humanity. So the Aka spirit is your personal aura. And the Uaka is the connections of energy of all of humanity. And prophecies come to Christians in the back and kahunas in the old times and prophecies. And Captain Cook Mark remarked in his journals, well, how could the natives know, know he was coming? It was like a ripple in the uaka. And when you can see into this energy grid, you can see what's coming. But you are connected. And so this becomes your ohana. Your family is humanity. Separations come through the spiritual grid. Lying, cheating, stealing, separate children from their parents and families from each other. And these are broken aka cords that can be healed in the Hawaiian teachings of ho'oponopono. To hold the light for that person. They don't even have to know you're doing it. You can reconnect these connections. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. And so anyone you pray about, come into that prayer with, I love you. I'm sorry for what's happened, but if we learn from this, there's nothing to be sorry from. And so it really it becomes, I love you. There's nothing to be sorry about. You know, please forgive me. I learned from it, so the lesson was valuable. And life will give you lessons, and animals will give their lives to teach you a lesson. But this is life. So there is really nothing to be forgiven for. If you've learned the lesson, you're a smarter, wiser person. And then there's the gratitude. Thank you. So instead of doing, I love you, please forgive me, and thank you, or, or, I'm sorry, please forgive me, skip those. I love you, and Thank you. Aloha and mahalo. Aloha and mahalo becomes your chant. Chant this into your mind when you meditate. Chant this into your life when you drive. Chant this into your life in every moment, and you'll never miss a moment of this moment now. You'll become the safest driver on the road. You'll have more attention on what you're focusing on. When you're controlling your thinking, you're controlling your life. And it doesn't have to be with, I'm sorry, and please forgive me. It's, it should be, thank you for giving me this lesson that I've grown from, with gratitude. 
So aloha and mahalo. This connects your ohana. So bring your family, the human family, together in prayer. When we pray for ourselves, our family, our community, our world, I love you and mahalo. And this will unite the connections of all of us. Because everybody wants a safe place for their families. Nobody wants to be in conflict. And so to solve conflict, families can get together and do Ho'oponopono as a community. And so as a church community, we can do it. And as a, as a government, we can do it. If we all live to be Pono, to be righteous in our responsibilities, which brings us to our next word, Kuliana. The Kuliana is a, a concept of truth. We all become responsible. In order to become responsible in old Hawaii, children were giving Kuliana. They were giving responsibilities. So as a young child, today it might be taking the garbage out or helping with the dishes. But these responsibilities are yours to take care of. And the best you can do is the being pono, to be righteous in those responsibilities. And when a young child grows to be a young man, he's giving more kuleana. And he has to learn to be righteous in those responsibilities. So your kuleana is everything that you're responsible for making your bed in the morning until the time you go back into that bed at night. And so you are responsible for everything you leave. And if somebody in front of you didn't see that they dropped a piece of paper, you are responsible to pick it up. That's your brother. So we're all responsible for each other. It's your kuleana to help this person that, that is needing help. If you are asked to help the homeless person or somebody that you know that's been in a time of need, it's your kuleana to sit and to listen and to help in any way that you can. And so kuleana, to be kuleana ikapono, to be righteous in your responsibilities. The more righteous you are in your responsibilities, the more responsibilities you will receive. And then you can move forward and become stronger, healthier, wiser as a person, as a church community, as a world system. We all need kuleana. We have to train our children to be responsible. If we don't, then the governments will. So it's our responsibility, our kuleana to help. As uncle, if I see a child, I'm going to miss a moment it would be a total tragedy. I'll do everything I can in the moment I'm with that child to try to inspire. Where's your heart lead you? Your heart will lead you in life. And it's okay to change your major. <laughs> it really is. Because your heart desires will change. But this is the spirit of Akua, God above, and the, who is dwelling within your heart, moving you in new directions. If you don't listen, then you get pushed. And so move with the flow of life. Take a breath, look at what's next, and now try to make it better. You're not, you're not responsible to bring the bum off the street to the third step. You know, you bring them to the curb. And then the, somebody else will bring them to the, to, the, to the doormat. And then somebody else will bring them to the door. Somebody's going to open the door. You are responsible for one step. If you give people three or four steps, then you blow them out of the water and they stop seeking truth. You don't want to disrupt anybody's belief system. Everybody has their own belief system, and so it's us to help them move from that into the next level. Your kuleana is to help everyone of your family, ohana, moving one step forward at a time. And that brings us to the mana, the power. The mana is the power of the spirit. And you can, only can absorb the power through the breath, the ha. The ha comes through the breath. And being trained in yoga meditation as a child, my father taught me pranayama breathing exercises. Controlling the breath as we're driving in the cab of a truck, one breath per mile. And so in a perfect breath control, he said it will build your piranha energy. You're, and it's not what you're getting from oxygen. You take a breath and you breathe in and out really fast. This is getting the oxygen. You get too much. You start getting lightheaded. But take a breath and you hold it. And when you hold your breath, your body is able to absorb the power, the piranha energy. In Hawaiians, it's mana. And I hear stories of kahunas of old that would chant over pools of water in a perfect breath control. It's breath into energy. And this is another spiritual truth. We are nothing for without breath. 
You can go seven days without food, you know, four or five days without water. How long are you going to live without your next breath? So you take that next breath and you hold it. And then your awareness comes focused into this moment of that breath. And so now you're looking at within each breath what's going on and you're kuleana to be ikapono to whatever's in this moment. Sharing that breath together amplifies that. So when we breathe together in meditation, the energy just comes up and it's a, it's, it's a prayer. And when two or more are gathered, this powerful prayer together really amplifies in our light to shine into the world. And what an honor it is to be connected to the uaka and share your mana, your power. Have you ever heard the stories of yogis that are floating and you know, moving through rock walls? And maybe you've heard stories of grandmothers that in an accident lifted the car off the child. These are things that are actually written accounts of, of kahunas of old that did miraculous healings, uh, holding broken limbs as it dematerialized and rematerialized whole and healthy in front of witnesses walking on lava lakes with nothing but tea leaves wrapped around their feet. Their mana, their power was so powerful. The legends of King Kamehameha talk about the lifting of the Naha stone, a 5,000 pound obelisk shaped stone moved here from Kauai to Hilo where it sits today and Naha warriors protected the stone and if any attempt to lift the stone because of the prophecies, if you failed, you died. You got one chance. Well, at 14 years old, they say the child, Kamehameha the Great, he woke from a dream saying that the mana of his ancestors descended upon him in this dream. And he knew he had the mana, the power to lift the stone. He approached the village of Hilo and the whole con the village approaching the, the Naha stone. More mana was said to be seen descending through the Uwaka. The spiritual connections where the great spirit above and our ancestors dwell with the great spirit in this universal grid. And now power can come to grandmother to lift the car. King Kamehameha was said to flip the 5,000 pound stone at 14 years old. So the legends in the, of the cultures of the world talk about these things of power. And the only thing that holds us back from the power is our thinking. Because the power is there. So how much power do you want? How good, well, can you breathe? Take your breath, work seriously. You breathe, breath work while you drive. Breath work in between the moments of thinking. Come back to your breath. You need a break, go to the bathroom and sit and breathe. Three, four yogic breaths, or, or big full breaths, one breath per minute. So this is why I've been able to do some of the chanting because of my breath work as a child. It's not something that people can just control their breath and when Captain Cook and the Westerners came here and they noticed, the Hawaiians noticed they were not breathing correctly. They have no negative words in their whole language. But these people aren't breathing right. So the word holly was used. The breathless ones. The people that weren't breathing. It was an observation. It was not a negative term. Now it's all been convoluted into some sort of negativity. But this isn't it. It's breathless. And so breathe clearly and your life will change. In this moment to the next is each breath. Now this is mindfulness taught by yogis for ages and ages and thousands of years. But this is something that's a truth, a spiritual truth. And you see how these all weave together as truth. And with these spiritual truths, we can embody them, make them our own, and come into each breath with aloha. Understanding everybody as ohana. And then your kuleana to raise up this energy. And then to find the power to fulfill any need that you have is through your breath. I had an eclectic childhood. Just to go back one quick moment. At 16 years old, I worked for Schmidt Music Centers. But at 13, I learned how to lift pianos. My father taught me to use my breath. Holding my breath, an upright piano, I could pick it up at 13 years old, put a four-wheel dolly underneath it, set it on the dolly, and move it out to the door, waiting for the next guy to come and help me get it down the stairs. And so this was done through breath and the knowledge of how to do it. Then I became a piano mover for nine years and moved upright pianos and concert grants, a Bosendorf nine-foot-six piano of 12 steps with two people. 
I always work the bottom end. And so it's all about leverage and knowing how to do it and how to breathe. And so when you take that breath, you hold it. And when you exhale, you hold tight in your bottom and you let the breath exhale out through your whole body and out your hands for healing light. Breath into energy. Yogic healing was taught to me by my father as a child. And then I learned, started studying Reiki. I found that really was fascinating. But, uh, you know, things come to me in threes. And so I first heard about Reiki in Jacksonville, Florida. And then I was up in North Dakota and I heard about Reiki. I found a book. And I said, well, this is really interesting because I knew energy work as a child. And we would do breath exercises, one breath per mile. Your energy starts to bubble and you have to give it away, he said. Your cup is full. You have to give it out. So when you fill your cup, you have something to give. Give it to the trees, my father told me. Give it to that traffic over there. See that guy tailgating? Send him some light. Help him. Help him. Help everyone that you come to contact. I'll never forget my father giving the shoes off his feet to a bum. He had no shoes. But his response, his kuleana, was to help this guy one step. And this guy needed shoes. He could buy new shoes. But this guy couldn't. So he gave up his shoes. Uh, like a childhood, I tell you. We were walking through by this hotel. My, my parents had the room. There's a whining coming from this room. And, and so, help me, help me, coming from the room. And my mom goes in. And, oh, this old lady, she was just really on her last. I mean, there was, she possibly, you know, it's like, I don't want to say how long she might lay, live. But she was in her last days. And she just wanted a bottle. She didn't want nothing but a bottle. And so you're to help them one step. I saw my father buy a bottle of alcohol for this poor old lady because that's all she really wanted. She didn't have much more. And so he serviced the universe by providing her last request. That's what she asked for. But that's come true. I mean, so I witnessed this as a child growing up, the life that can be had just by being in the moments right now and practicing one breath per mile. You never lose focus of the road. And I can do chanting stories of Pele and drive and emergency situations come up and I pulled over and never miss a beat of my story. He called it driving meditation. So it's breath into energy and now I can actually focus on anything I want to while my drive is completely under control. It's really an amazing thing to, to be able to do, and, and it's fun. I find so much joy in sharing Hawaiian culture to the best of my ability, and, and sometimes they say, slow it down, uncle, slow it down. It's too much, too fast. <laughs> but the last value we're coming to is the malu, the peace. The peace that we find within these places that's within us. And anahoho malu is Waikoloa Bay over there. They call it Ebe for short. And I ho ho malu. Malu is our word. It's peace. And I ho ho malu means the place of peace and tranquility. This is that place that hopefully you find when you go into your heart center and you meditate into your place of peace and tranquility. Find your malu, your peace. So the whole Hawaiian values now accepted as unity of Kona values are values that I've accepted to my life. And it's my hope and joy and honor to be able to inspire maybe a little bit for you to accept these Hawaiian values as your values. For through the values of truth, we find wisdom. And it's all about the wisdom of what am I supposed to do next? And guided by your values, you will never go wrong. So my friends, I'd say thank you at this point for allowing me to share some of these Hawaiian values and the values of the church. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim. What a beautiful, beautiful message. And growing up here in, in Hawaii and also growing up in unity to have that, you know, come together today was really a beautiful, a beautiful thing. So we'd like to say mahalo at this time. And this is our, our tithe and offering time. So we're going to, we're going to get all this beautiful that we just got and we're going to hold our tithes and offerings in our hand. And this is our, this at this time, if you're joining us online, you can, you can, I believe there's a button that you can click online, but we'd like to say our offertory prayer, which is on the screen here for us, which is together, divine love, 
through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am abundantly prosperous every way. And now we're going to have Dondi's going to come up and we're going to pass our offertory. This song is called Koke'e, and it's in Hawaiian, uh, but it talks about how the beauty of the land, how we take care of the beauty of the land, and we, it's a sacred land to, to all of us here on the islands. And uh, so we, we talk about memories that we have in, on the islands growing up, and it talks about saying that we will never forget, we'll always come back. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. And now we are going to, through spirit, we know that, the, that, that as we give, so shall we receive. We dedicate and consecrate these gifts to do your will and work in this ministry, in our lives, and in the community. Amen. And so it is. And now it is time for us to do our peace song and aloha oi. So if you were still rising and doing that, that part... All right, maybe we can get in our circle. And we want to thank those joining in with us online. Make sure to tell your friends and family that they can tune in on Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube if you're not here in person. Our guest speaker next week is Reverend Sophia, and her topic is You Have the Power. And this is just a wonderful time in this to, to talk about that there will be nothing that it feels like if you have nothing that you can do or don't have power in what's going on. But the truth is you have the strength in more powerful than in any other outer condition that we have that within. So it looks like it'll be a powerful 
stay after for our, our wonderful um, vision boarding with Kayla. And there's food, so refreshments. And, and those tuning in online, you can do our vision boarding today also. And we are so grateful that you're here today. Awesome. First song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin. With me. And as we hold this time together till we meet again, my friends, thank you for so much aloha, and we'll finish with aloha oi. Aloha oi, aloha oi, e ke ona ona no i kali. I think Donnie got a little closing music for us. Uh, yeah, sure. Don't forget to stay after for our live, um, uh, those tuning in online. You got something wrong? Uh, hey, how about, um, let's see. Whoever you may be, sweet someone, you should meet you a tea. Although you pay no attention to me at all, one kiss and needless to mention, I had to fall. How oh, I wonder who's keeping us apart. Don't blunder and give away your heart. And when I whisper, I love you. And then you'll know, sweet someone, that you belong to me. Sweet someone, whoever you may be, Sweet someone, you should be to a tea. Although you pay no attention to me at all, one kiss and needless to mention, I had to fall. How I wonder who's keeping us apart. Don't blunder and give away your heart. And when I whisper, I love you, and then you'll know, sweet someone, that you belong to me. Hey. 